Star Wars Battlefront 2. Everyone knows the tragic story that unfolded around this game in the fall of 2017. One of the biggest gaming controversies in the history of the industry, the greedy, lazy and frankly stupid pay to win microtransaction system that EA tried to portray as a sense of pride and accomplishment for players. The gaming press, journalists, YouTubers and other gamers on social media had an absolute field day, spitting on the delusional mindset that EA thought they could get away with. I myself played Battlefront 2 for about a month from launch up until about the middle of December and then I'd finished. I had enough. I felt I had experienced everything that I could possibly do in the game. So I just moved on, leaving my disappointment and anger behind with it. But now as gamers we seem to be in that position that we seem to go through every year, waiting eagerly and some impatiently for the new games to release this fall. So I thought, why not try and pass some of that time by revisiting Star Wars Battlefront 2 and see what the game is like now. And also I want to talk a little bit about what the future holds for it. Just a quick disclaimer, if you are a seasoned Battlefront 2 player, you've been playing the game consistently throughout its lifespan, this video will be nothing new to you. But for everyone else who passed on it or left it early, I want to essentially review this game a second time so you can make up your mind on have you been missing out or was your decision the right one? Let's start out on the positives. This game started off with a very good impression from me. The UI in the main menu is so much cleaner and better than it was at launch. Before, certain images were made shorter to get everything cramped into the screen, but now they've separated the options into different categories, like for choosing your game mode for example. You still can't buy the loot boxes, not that that should matter at all, but I think many of us expected that EA would turn the system back on after Christmas, probably just to grasp a little bit more money from the game, but surprisingly they haven't. Unlocks now rely on either credits, level caps, or these new skill points. When you level your class up in the game, you'll get this really nice blue icon that notifies your rank up. I don't even know why I'm mentioning that, but there's just something about it. It's just really cool, I guess. And each time you level up your class, you will be rewarded with a skill point, which you can either choose to upgrade an ability, or unlock a new one, if you've reached a high enough level. Now, the gameplay, people say that there's no skill in Battlefront 2 because of this pay-to-win system that it started off with. But to be perfectly honest with you guys, in my 10 hours of replaying this game, I never died once and thought I'd been cheated. Sure, getting killed by a player who has like all purple cards leaves a bad taste in your mouth, but I didn't ever think it was down to stats despite on what the menu says. Battlefront 2 is a casual shooter, no doubt about that. But you can still have those really close and intense matches in Galactic Assault. Sure, the game really does suck when you're getting your ass handed to you, but every so often I would be in those games where we would be in overtime for several minutes. Defenders just trying to wipe the objective clean while the attackers are just desperately pushing themselves onto the capture zone to keep the game going. Plus, I know we've established this many times already, but this game is gorgeous. Naboo especially, I think has been given some tweaks on its weather settings. I remember when the game first came out, it had like this nice sunny day look, and now they've given it a more like sunset or dawn look, and it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, Starfighter Assault still remains, in my opinion, as the best part of the game. To me, it was just the most fulfilling part of the whole multiplayer experience. Sometimes spawns are unfair and sometimes you crash your ship from time to time, which is annoying. But it's still really fun and really satisfying, especially when you're performing well. So let's talk now about the new additions added to the game and some of the negatives. Now, I'm sure you all remember one of Battlefront 2's biggest selling points during its marketing months was that all future DLC would be free. No season passes at all. Period. With that, what have we had since November? I'm sure I've missed a few things out on this, but here's the big ones. We've had one new map, two new heroes, and a bunch of new character appearances for each classes. That's absolutely terrible. In eight months, that's all we've got. I know we've got this big Clone Wars update coming, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Each class still only holds four primary weapons. There are a few abilities to choose from, but I think players will just find the one that fits their playstyle and just stick with that one, ignoring the rest. A few game modes have been added like Hero Starfighters, which is basically heroes versus villains but in their starships, which I personally didn't like. I pick Starfire Assault over it every time. Extraction, which is basically Escort from Overwatch. I thought it was alright, but it wasn't nothing special. And then there was Jetpack Cargo, which I haven't played yet, but everybody's a rocket trooper. That's like all the info you need to know about that one. So that's all the basic information I wanted to give you guys on what the game is like 8 months onward. So now I want to briefly talk about Battlefront 2's future. This big Clone Wars update that is bringing in multiple new maps on the planet Geonosis 
with new heroes and villains from the iconic Star Wars conflict. Now, I thought initially that this was going to be like one big release DLC, but according to this article I found, the update will be spread out over the rest of the year with additional unannounced content that will also be coming within the future roadmap updates. Obi-Wan Kenobi and General Grievous will arrive in the autumn, and Anakin and Count Dooku will turn up in the winter. As for the new maps, that is unknown at this point. But the fact is that the majority of this DLC will be released by the end of the year, when all these new games will start coming out. You've got Battlefield 5, Fallout 76, Hitman 2, Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2, Just Cause 4, Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Darksiders 3, like so many games. And I'm sure there are some of you watching that are like not interested in any of those games I've just mentioned, but the hard truth is, most of us are. And we're not going to be going back to Battlefront 2 anytime soon, unless like all these games flop, which is pretty unlikely. Sure, maybe when the embargoes have blown over for these games, like in the early next year, people will start going back and see maybe that Battlefront 2 is finally the game we wanted, and that would be great. But I have to admit, after playing the game for about 10 hours in the last week and a half, I've reached the conclusion that this game was never, for me, meant to be a long-term standing shooter. It felt more like, for me, just a filler, just for a few months, but it didn't even reach that. And I think it's all down to how overhyped this game was during the marketing. The Battlefield 1 killer, people were calling it, but in the end, Battlefront 2 killed itself. Finally, I want to ask you guys about your expectations with this new Star Wars game coming out at the end of 2019, I believe, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, developed by Respawn Entertainment, who are the creators of the Titanfall series. Not much info in the game yet, but judging by the title, you'll be playing as a Jedi. I know, right? Mind blown. Personally, I expect it to be another first-person shooter like Respawn are known for in the past, but I'd imagine they'll put their own twist on things, but maybe I'm wrong. So, I'll hand it over to you guys now. So what do you want out of this new Star Wars title? Or are you just completely scarred from Star Wars for the rest of your existence? After what went down with Battlefront 2? Thank you guys for watching the video, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are you reconsidering to play Battlefront 2 again? Or does it deserve no less than being in the trash can? You guys take care of yourselves, have a good day, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.